The CCO care model has exceeded my own expectations for what I thought we could do in really just a three year period of time. They're turning out really remarkable um, outcomes. They've uh, had a huge increase in uh, patient-centered primary care homes, reduction in specialty uh, care, increase in, in primary care, significant reduction in hospital readmissions in ambulatory ER visits. We've seen a big increase in uh, developmental screening for, for kids uh, up to their third birthday. On top of that, they've met their, their, their fiscal constraints. They were to, to operate under a budget that grew at only 3.4% per member per month, and they've all done that. Some of them have done it pretty well and are sitting on uh, some fat reserves. So that part of the experiment, I think, has been, has been very rewarding. One of the reasons that the care model works is because it's local. You know, there's uh, partnerships developed with um, you know, early learning hubs, with the school districts, with a lot of other community players. And, and it's that sense of, of, of community that, that is the glue that makes this work. The problem we've got is that a lot of the CCOs, including the one in Lane County that was purchased by Centene, grew out of the IPAs that were developed to provide care under the Oregon Health Plan back in the, in the 90s. And the docs who made those initial investments were in their 40s and 50s, and now they're in their 60s and 70s and they want to get cashed out. And as I said, the, the CCO model has worked so well, not only from an outcome standpoint, but also from a cost savings standpoint that these CCOs are becoming really valuable assets. So you combine docs who are retiring who want to cash out with a, you know, a for-profit company like Centene, and you, you got the recipe for disaster. I can't believe that Centene's first priority is going to be, you know, engaging the community in Lane County. So um, I think the solution is, first of all, we've got to get ahead of it. We can't let that happen anymore. Uh, and the part of it is to make sure that you give those physicians who have made that investment a path out. I think Portland, you've got a number of health systems all operating there and you've got a lot of really smart visionary CCOs. Providence, of course, is not owned um, in, in, in Oregon. It's run out of, out of Seattle, but Legacy, OHSU, uh, you know, Kaiser does have a mother down in Oakland, but I mean, th those are really smart people. And I tell you, I've been in a lot of meetings uh, actually since I left office where these folks would be sitting around the table and they'd, they'd say, but where's the leadership going to come from? And I'd look around the room, I'd say, well, just look around the room. And in 2011, the set of circumstances that allowed the CCOs to, to come into existence, really it was the perfect storm and it was purely a fiscal storm. Uh, we'd lost $750,000 million from the stimulus package that had been propping up Medicaid. We had a 14% increase in, in, in enrollment because of the recession, because of high unemployment. And the state had a $3 billion hole in the general fund. And if we were to continue to cover everyone who, uh, who, who currently had been enrolled in the health plan, uh, it would have been a, a $1.2 billion hole in the Medicaid budget, which would translate into a 39% cut. So the providers were very interested in avoiding a 39% cut. And so what we did is we essentially uh, made some administrative efficiencies, we moved the line up on the benefit package, and we front-end loaded the money we had into the first year of the biennium and got that 39% cut down to 11%, but that still left a $250 million general fund whole 600 total funds in the second year of the biennium, and we plan to fix that by transforming the care model. Mm -hmm. So to some, to some extent, it was getting people in the squeeze chute because of the circumstances, right? But once we were committed, and we got the legislature to build their entire budget around the assumption that we were going to uh, find $250 million in saving. And then we, we realized uh, in 2012 that even if we could realize savings under the, that care model, which we've demonstrated since then, we were never going to get it done in that one year. And that's the point at which we went back to see Dr. Berwick and, and uh, Secretary Sebelius, and they agreed to give us a $1.5 billion investment that essentially filled that hole and then declined over the next five years as savings for cost savings to the plan accrued. Uh, but I also think that the CCOs have to be viewed as sort of a transitional organization, not, not, not an end point, but a, but a step along a continuum. So for example, we thought it was very important, at least I thought it was very important, that we move this care model into the private market. That's where the money is, that's what's going to cement these reforms uh, from a system-wide standpoint. And we haven't made nearly as much progress as I'd hoped there. Um, we have started to move it into the private market with state employees on the Public Employees Benefit Board. Uh, we haven't moved it into um, uh, school teachers yet, which is the, uh, what's called the Oregon Education uh, Benefit Board. 
So that, those two groups are about 300,000 people, which would be a significant penetration into the private market. And obviously we haven't yet moved the care model uh, onto the exchange as an option for, uh, for individuals or for uh, uh, employers. And I think we're reaching a point where spending public dollars on this system without a strong commitment to advancing community health and the transformational change that's necessary to get there is really hard to defend from a moral standpoint. And my prediction, and I've been making this for quite a while now, is that at some point the, the hyperinflationary medical system and the aging population are going to hit the, the fiscal wall. I think that, that the leadership requires holding hands and taking a step together. It requires finding some area where you're not going to compete. Are they going to see it coming and begin to transform themselves so that they will be ready for it? Or are they going to just ride, you know, ride the horse uh, 